Trails get us right to the heart of nature. They can be challenging, extremely remote, but they always provide a memorable adventure. Trails are the global arena of the sport of trail running. My name is Heather Jackson, and I grew up in New Hampshire to active parents. We spent a lot of time adventuring outdoors, and I got involved in team sports at an early age, playing soccer and later ice hockey at a collegiate level. I found my way into triathlon, where I spent over a decade competing at the highest level. I'm now competing in my first year of elite level trail running, and I can't believe I'm going to be racing here in Chamonix, the crucible of ultra trail. It's hard to describe the scale and stunning beauty of the Mont Blanc mountain range surrounding Chamonix. Simply put, it's breathtaking. I'm here on the 20th anniversary of Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc, or UTMB, as this iconic race has become known throughout the world. That race has spawned seven other races, making this week a singular global event. But I'm not just here for the racing. I hope by sharing the conversations and experiences I've had here, I can let you in on the secrets of what makes this whole area very special and unlike anywhere else I've been. Katerin Paletti, co-founder of UTMB, was the first race director at the first UTMB race in 2003. She, along with her husband Michelle, started a global phenomenon in trail running. I went to the UTMB house to meet Katerin to talk about the history, the global running community, and the celebration of 20 years of this iconic trail running event. Hello, Heather. What can I do for you? <laughs> You've already done enough welcoming me here. It's amazing. Um, my first time ever to Chamonix and to UTMB, mm -hmm. and it is the 20th anniversary. Is that correct? Yes. Can you tell me about the first year, 2003? It was just the beginning of the ultra endurance in the trade running. And uh, like that, we go on a lot, a lot, a lot of trails. And uh, each time we came back in Chamonix, we say, wow, it's amazing. I think there is something to do in this place. I began to take care of this new race and to announce everywhere on the websites I found. And we were very lucky because we come from the IT world. Okay. So, because I was the only one who didn't run, they all look at me and they say, oh, Catherine, you stay at home and you look for very everything and uh, you are the race director. Yeah. Are you happy? <laughs> I say, yes, because I didn't imagine exactly what it was to be a race director, you know. Why do you think trail running has become as popular as it has? It's the only sport where you don't need uh, any structures like a swimming pool, a tennis terrain. You find some trails everywhere in the world. It's uh, one of the sports where you can be alone to have a contact with the nature and with some friends because uh, trail running is also the possibility now, because it grew and you find everywhere on the planet, to meet some different person, to discover different cultures, different uh, countries. 
some runners are elite and they want to win. Some are not elite and uh, they don't care to win, but they just want to be a finisher. And uh, if they are a finisher, they are the hero of their family, maybe their street, their uh, village, uh, town or country, I don't know. And uh, they are sure that they are able to do something very hard, some extraordinary things. And uh, it's the possibility to mix all these communities together like a very big family. I love that. We were able to do a hike run up this trail. We started at dawn, so I think that actually just made the experience that much more what it was because we literally crested the top of the trail as the sun was popping through and we popped out of kind of a wooded area to just the entire mountain range sprawled in front. It was completely breathtaking and I think you realize very quickly how tiny you are as an individual to be able to be here and run on the trails. It was almost impossible to run because I just wanted to stop and, and stare at them. <laughs> can do the black one. Good. Well done. <laughs> Am I hired? <laughs> you are a wheelie farmer? Yeah. <laughs> and now we have to turn them every day. Easy, slowly, that's good. You're doing good. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Welcome to, to La Calèche. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's go inside. Okay. Federico Gilardi, who oversees the iconic and pivotal Grand Col Foray Pass during the annual UTMB Mont Blanc race, brought me deep into the history and character of the region. From the early adventurers who saw the unique appeal of the area, to the birth of the UTMB Mont Blanc race itself, we talked trails, community, and racing. Chamonix is an old touristic place because the first tourists, we say, that come here at the 18th century. Wow, okay. And okay. they discovered this uh, small village was Chamonix. And then so quickly they discover the mountains. And uh, so Chamonix became really quickly a touristic place and alpinism born more or less here. Yes. Chamonix was the capital of alpinism in the past. Now we can say that it's also the trade running capital because, uh, because of UTMB, because of these uh, events born 20 years ago. By the trade running as a runner and a volunteer, it was a really good uh, way to create links community. with the people. Yeah, very welcoming community. Yeah, <laughs> I did a lot of volunteering since uh, 2009 okay. around the uh, UTMB. And uh, since uh, 2017, I'm used to be uh, on Grand Col Ferret. It's the mythic passage from Italy to Switzerland on CCC and UTMB. So you'll be at one of the highest points yes. for UTMB and CCC. And CCC, yes. During the race, I manage a small group. I am with another guy, just checking... Uh, oh, the bibs. The bibs, yes. Okay. We stay to Grand Col Ferret until the last racer arrives on the head station after Grand Col Ferret. Uh... That is so good. We 
are on day two here in Chamonix and it has just been the most incredible experience. This morning we got to hike at dawn up to this beautiful vista just showcasing the mountains in this whole area, including Mont Blanc. And this afternoon I was just able to meet with Federico who was able to share with me a lot of the history of Chamonix and this area and just talk about how the trails once connected the communities to each other and now they obviously connect the community of trail runners from all around the world who all come here for UTMB. And I got to try fondue for the first time ever, so <laughs> it's been a great day so far. <laughs> Have a good one. Uh, thank you. Guess things are getting real now. <laughs> the smile is hiding the fear. <laughs> so I got my bib, I've got my race bracelet on for tomorrow, and now we're here at the Hoka Base Camp, just hanging out, having a little meet and greet, mingle, chatting with everyone in the trail running community, and just really enjoying the final few hours before race day tomorrow. Uh, but this is her first European experience. I know about your incredible win in 2016, but you, at one point in that race, were 45 minutes down, I believe? Yeah, a bit more, yeah. <laughs> and so, I guess just, what was going through your head when you're <laughs> down? It was not my first time in Chamonix. I think it was my fifth attempt on the UTMB. Okay. So I really want to finish the race. So that was the goal, that's why I continue and I push to at least reach the finish line when I was really sick and bad. I was thinking to do two days just to sleep in Comayor. But then when you go in front of the, the race, you don't think about uh, sleep. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just pushing here. At what point did you come into the lead? Just step by step and uh, yeah, you just fix some uh, small uh, objective. And uh, yeah, when the first place was uh, only 15 minutes ahead, you can think about <laughs> reaching the head. The year that you won, what was it like running through these streets? Ah, uh, yeah, but, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Is that your biggest? Yeah, of course, because uh, because of this uh, scenario of the race and a uh, lot of um, down and up and... Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, amazing. Uh, and I crossed the, ra the finish line with my daughter. Oh, that And, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, emotion on the, on the finish line. Yes. And there's... You will see there's a lot of people at the finish line. <laughs> so it's your first time uh, in, uh, in Chamonix. So yeah, I hope it would be better than my two first time. <laughs> but it was a long time ago and I was starting uh, racing, running. So I think you have uh, already some uh, experience so, on that. So. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Are there any, it's very general, any specific tips? For a newbie, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there's so many things you could talk about, but terrain or the weather or... Just start fast, then you accelerate and you finish at the sprint. <laughs> it should be okay. <laughs> Perfect game plan. It's the way to manage the rest, no? <laughs> yep. That's <laughs> typically how it goes for me. That was so awesome to get to talk to Ludo ahead of UTMB week. And then just to hear what it was like to run through the streets of Chamonix and break the tape here. I can't imagine that experience. And just to be able to pick his brain on tips for race day and what this whole event is about. Just awesome to hear from someone, especially that's been in the trail running community for so long, but also a Hoka-sponsored athlete since the beginning. From where I started after Ironman Kona last year to now, I cannot really even digest everything that's happened in the last 10 months. In my first year of trail running, I've now done a 100 mile trail race. I then jumped to the 100K and then the 50K distance. racing OCC, which stands for Orsier Champé Chamonix. 
because those are the towns that we race through. I get to run this 56K trail race, which starts in Switzerland and then ends up back in Chamonix, France. This whole idea of a race starting in one country and then finishing in another is mind-blowing. It's pretty cool. We're going to be running through different countries. I don't know what I expected, but that was beyond it for sure. Took a little fall out there pretty early, reopened my leg a little bit. Uh, it was very comical. I wish that was caught on camera because I kind of tumbled off a little ledge to the right down a grassy hill and literally had to crawl my way back up onto course. So that was fun. You would kind of pop out of a wooded climb area and we would just be on this vista with the mountains off in the distance. And it was hard to pay attention to the trail because it was just literally so jaw dropping. It was just absolutely insane. Running through the village was just so cool. I mean, everyone just out cheering you on. And it was probably a good half mile stretch with people cheering uh, around the bend into the finish shoot area. And to have this bracelet still on and to make it all the way to the finish was the ultimate goal and I did that. And it was just, yeah, awesome feeling to be able to cross the finish line today. I definitely want to make it back to this event. And I also think that I was starting to feel good near the end, mile 30-ish. So for me, I think the longer ones are maybe beneficial, um, just having that endurance from my years of racing Ironman. And so to come back and maybe test CCC or the full UTMB one day is definitely in maybe my long-term plan. For me, it was more than just coming for that race. I just wanted to see this whole week and everything that it's about and what happens and be a part of that trail running community after having watched it from afar for the past few years. It's literally about being out here in the mountains around Chamonix, France for the first time ever and really just experiencing what that is and seeing, seeing what it's all about. And I got to delve into local cheese, chocolates, baked goods here. And I would say so far, the trail running thing is pretty awesome.